So hopefully you have uh, managed to successfully figure out how to reference the working directory in your particular uh, system of notebooks that you're using. So um, I'm using a generic local installation, um, but you may be using one of the cloud systems. So in most of the systems, it's useful to learn what the current working directory is using the get CWD um, function, which we saw in an earlier lesson. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And I can see because I have a local install, it's showing me my user directory. Um, so I am going to now import uh, this Excel file and uh, read it in as a data frame. So first I am going to construct the path. So I'll take this working directory that I've discovered um, and I have put this file into a subdirectory of my, work, of my um, home directory called data. So I'm now going to construct a string for the, um, the full path of where the file is by concatenating the working directory that I figured out up here, plus the uh, data subpath, and then sticking the file name on the end of that. So that's the path that I'm going to um, put into the read underscore Excel function. So there are several different um, built-in functions that Pandas has, and uh, this is the one for Excel. We'll also be using the one for reading CSV files. But once I um, run, uh, perform this function, I can assign um, the read in data into a, uh, a data frame that I'm calling fuel type. And then I will have um, Python display what it looks like. I can see here that the Excel file contains the same information that was read into my data frame. So the uh, read underscore Excel function has um, replicated the structure of my spreadsheet as a part of um, my uh, pandas data frame. Now, this is not a particularly long um, data frame, but you could have a data frame that has thousands of rows in it. And so often it's convenient to just be able to see the first few lines so there is a um, method for data frames called dot head. And what dot head does is it just shows you the first few lines. Here I've used six as the argument for this method. And so it shows me the first six lines. If I leave that out, it will just um, by default show me the first five lines of the table, which is usually about the right amount. Now, um, the one of the things that you can see here, unlike the data frame that I made earlier, this data frame does not have any labels for the rows. It's only using the num numeric indices. And that's because when you use the um, read underscore Excel function to read in a spreadsheet, it doesn't know what it should use for the labels. So if we want to assign labels to the rows, we can do that by um, grabbing one of the columns to use as the label. So in this case, using the, um, the names of the states would probably be the best thing to do. So if I um, look at what the, col the column state column contains, I see that it contains the names of each of the states. So what I can do then is to take this column that I referred to as fuel type state and just assign that as the index of my fuel type um, data frame. And if I do that, I can see that now instead of um, listing this by numeric index, I am now able to list each row with labels as its index. And that's actually very convenient because um, now I'm able to refer to a row by 
its label instead of just by its number. So for example, if I want to see the data for Ohio, I don't have to go through and count down and try to figure out which row is the Ohio row. I can just simply refer to it by its name and uh, I get all the information take, uh, pulled out as a series um, identified by the label of that row, Ohio. Notice that even though I assign the name as the label for the rows, it still also is a column as well. I didn't get rid of that. So the state names are both the labels for the row and also values for one of the columns in the row as we see right here.